Today is the third Sunday after Easter. The epistle is taken from that of St. Peter, chapter 2. Beloved, I exhort you as strangers and pilgrims to abstain from carnal desires which war against the soul. Behave yourselves honorably among the pagans, that whereas they slander you as evildoers, they may, through observing you by reason of your good works, glorify God in the day of visitation. Be subject, therefore, to every human creature for God's sake, whether to the king as supreme or to the governors as sent through him for, for vengeance on evildoers and for the praise of the good. For such is the will of God, that by doing good you should put silence to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Live as free men, yet not choosing your freedom as a cloak for malice, but as servants of God. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. <coughs> Servants, be subject to your masters in all fear, not only to the good and moderate, but also to the severe. This indeed is a grace in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord Gospel. Saying that according to St. John chapter 16. At that time Jesus said to his disciples, A little while and you shall see me no longer, and again in a little while you shall see me, because I go to the Father. Some of his disciples therefore said to one another, What is this he says to us? A little while and you shall see me, and again in a little while you shall not see me, and I go to the Father. They kept saying, Therefore, what is this little while of which he speaks? We do not know what he is saying. But Jesus knew that they wished to ask him, and he said to them, You inquire about this among yourselves, because I said, a little while and you shall not see me, and again in a little while you shall see me. And men and men I say to you that you shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice. And you shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow, sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman about to give birth has sorrow, because her hour has come. But when she has brought forth a child, she no longer remembers the anguish for, her the jo for joy that a man is born into the world. And you therefore have sorrow now, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no one shall take from you. In the words of the Holy Gospel. <clears throat> they kept saying, therefore, what is this little while of which he speaks? We do not know what he is saying. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Your faithful, this is the third Sunday after Easter. As you can still see, the, well, a few lilies that are still on the altar. And uh, hallelujahs all throughout the intro. We're still in a very um, celebration time. We're in a very joyful time. But St. Alphonsus has us consider today uh, this little while that Christ speaks about. What is this little while he wants us to consider? Because they did not know what he meant. But St. Alphonsus says he was trying to tell them the importance of this little while, the importance of time. Time. St. Bernadette of Siena says that time is the most important thing to us as men. He says it is as important as God, time itself. Because with time, the time that is given us, we can at every moment acquire God, we can at every moment increase our merit in heaven, we can at every moment become greater saints, and at the same time, with every moment of time, we can turn away from God, and we can lose God, and we can lose our souls. So time is very important, he says most important, almost, he says, as it were, as important as God, because it is how we gain God, and it's through time. But time is a gift. Time is a gift that most, he says also, when he continues, not only is time the most important of all things, it is also one of the most, uh, it is the least esteemed amongst men. Men don't care about time, or they don't realize time. They got, I got years to do this. I got, like we mentioned many times before, I'm young, I got time, I'll do this later. When I'm older, I'll convert later. I got time, I'll take care of that later. And a lot of the times it doesn't get done. And St. Alphonsus says you can ask those who amuse and, and play all day, five, six hours, and he says, ask them, what are they doing? And they said, well, we're, we're enjoying ourselves, we're, we're amusing ourselves. And he asked somebody who stares out the window, what are you doing? I'm passing the time. Mm -hmm. Somebody standing in the street, what are you doing? Just sitting here, passing the time. And he asked, why are you passing the time? What do you mean, passing the time? Time is most valuable. Time is enough for us to gain heaven. Time is enough for us to make reparation for our sins. On, on both the negative and the positive. 
we have a lot to merit. We can merit, like we mentioned uh, the other day, the, the, the more you love is the brighter you are you're going to be in heaven. We have, we have a lot we can merit, higher positions in heaven. But not only that, I'm sure for a lot of us, we're not only so worried about what we can merit, but how much we have to make up for all our faults. That's still where a lot of us are probably focused on. I got, I got a lot of baggage I got to still get rid of, and I got time to do it right now. So why are you staring out the window, passing away time? Why are you uh, doing recreation for five hours at a time, amusing yourselves? You have time, that's a gift from God, and it's not going to be a gift forever. Now, it's not bad to have recreation, it's not bad to have amusements, but to waste time, to waste time is what's bad. To waste time is evil because it was a gift, a gift that God has given us to, do, to use it. Like, remember the, the parable of the, of the coins. The master gave it three servants, ten coins, or, and five coins, and two coins. And the, the, the one, or whatever, whichever number it was, he went and he buried it, and he kept it safe. And he didn't want anything to happen to it. Well, the others went and they, they, they bought and they sold and they, and they doubled his money. But the one servant went and kept it safe, his gift that he was given, our gift of time. We went and we kept it safe. He went and he buried it, and he did nothing with it. He didn't do anything, quote-unquote, bad. He wasn't doing anything evil. He was just passing the time, waiting for our Lord to come back. And the master came back and he asked what he did with the coin. He said, I, I, was, I was afraid of you. I didn't do anything bad with it. I just I left it as it were and I didn't use it. It was a nice gift. I appreciate you giving it to me, but here's, here's it back. It's, it's the same as it was. And the master was very, and punished him. And that's, that's what it is with us in the gift of time. Not that we, it's not just so much that we use our time bad which we do, I'm sure, all the time. But it's not so much that we use our time bad, it's that even if we use our time for idleness, remember the parable, St. Matthew says, that those were standing all the day idle. They weren't doing anything wrong. They were just passing the time, chewing on a blade of grass, sitting on a wheelchair for hours on end, passing the time. That's what's wrong, because we have to use the gift as God has given us, especially because we're all sinners. And we're made, we have to repay the debt. He says, every word shall be counted. Down to the last pence, down to the last penny. God is more strict judge than down to the last penny. Every word you say shall be accounted for. And we've all done sin. We're all sinners. So how can we now say, well, we're not committing sin. We're not doing anything wrong. So now we can kind of relax. We go to confession, we're good. And we can just sit here and pass the day idle. No, you got a lot to work on. Because you got a lot to make up for. You robbed glory from God. By committing sin, you robbed God of the glory you should have been giving him during that time. Maybe you scandalized your neighbor, as we talked about before. Scandal. You have a lot to repair. Maybe you stole. You have a lot to pay back. And sin is always theft. Theft from God. You have a lot to pay back. Time is a, is a gift that God gives us to use, not to spend idle. Not that recreation in itself is bad. It's good. And even in relaxation, it's good to a moderate degree, but don't spend the day idle. And Bernadine says, uh, consider the value of time. What is this little while which he speaks, which our Lord speaks? Because it is a little while. It's a very little while. And it's, but time is most valuable, and yet we esteem it so low. We waste it. We actually, we, that's a common saying for us, that we actually say, oh, I'm just passing the time. Passing the gift of time. We don't, it's obviously because we don't realize how important it is. To realize how important our salvation is. To realize how important it is, even not to go to purgatory. Just even the, on, the, on the lighter scale. You don't want to go to purgatory either. Let alone hell. And you have a lot to make up for. We have a lot of sins we have to wipe out. So what are we doing passing the time? We should be giving it to God. Honoring God with it. Even in our recreations and weeping for our sins. St. Francis Borgia, he loved and very much cherished time. And he would spend a lot of his time in prayer and meditation. And, and they would ask him about uh, com conversations. You know, in, the, in those times they would have discor uh, discussions and discuss about philosophy and so on. And, and they asked him about a conversation that he didn't know the answer to. And he didn't know. And they, and they rebuked him for it. And he said, well, I would rather be considered stupid than to waste my time with vanities. He had other more important things to do. He didn't need to be discussing things. He didn't need to be. He didn't need to seem smart. 
He had more important things to do. He had his soul to save. So there was a Benedictine monk, abbess, uh, sister, to give another idea of time, how valuable it is, not just, I, this is on the positive side, but I'm still thinking about the negative side of how much I have to make up for for my sins. But if we go to the positive side, for maybe some of us who can, or some of you who can, to think about how much merit we can gain before we get rid of all our baggage of sin. There was a Benedictine monk who appeared to a soul, and she said, she was saved, she went to heaven. And she told her the value of time that she would, if she desired one thing, she was already saved, but if she desired one thing, it would that she can go back to earth and have the time to gain more merit, to suffer more illness. She said, to put it in perspective, because heaven is for eternity, so it's kind of hard to, to, to contemplate this, but if you really just think about it kind of <coughs> simply, the fact that heaven is for all eternity, she said that she would rather come back to earth for the, for the merit of a simple Ave Maria, for the merit of a simple Hail Mary, that much merit, you could say that little bit of merit, for that much merit, she would come back to earth and suffer whatever illness she was suffering. So let's just say, you know, whatever it was, cancer or something, those who suffer very, a, a great illness, and it's very hard, it's very painful, it's burdensome. She said she would come back to earth and suffer that illness until judgment day which is at that time, until now we're still not there, and all the way, who knows how long it's going to be, it could be a very long time, she would suffer that sickness on earth, just to gain, even if that, none of that gained her merit, but just to gain uh, the merit of a single Hal Mary. You think about, well, that doesn't seem kind of proportional. Well, judgment is out of time, it comes to an end. Eternity doesn't. So if you gain this much more merit in heaven, you're that much more happier, and that much more closer to God, for all eternity. So this much is infinite. That much merit is infinite because it's for all eternity. One how Mary is this little, but it goes on for eternity that you get to enjoy it and get to be higher in heaven. That's the importance of time. She would come back and suffer the rest of it until judgment in that sickness just to gain that much merit. So why do we stand the day idle? And let alone committing sin, doing the opposite, robbing God and making ourselves more in debt to God. So some will ask, again, what, what is evil about it? What is evil about it? What's evil about it is you're, you're, you're taking for granted a gift that God has given you. Even if you're not committing actual sin, mortal sin or even venial sin, quote unquote. <coughs> but you're just idle. That's what's evil, is you're taking that, that gift of God and squandering it, doing nothing with it. Those in the marketplace, they stood all the day idle. Not committing sin, they weren't stealing, they weren't uh, whatever, they were just standing idle. And the master went in and he said, why are you standing idle? Go into the vineyard. Stop procrastinating. The time is, uh, is important, it's valuable, don't waste it. So again, some will say, okay, I understand, time is important, but I'm young. I'm young. I still got time. I have time, I mentioned before, I have time to make up for my sins in my old age. I have time because I know I'm going to suffer. So that, you know, I, I'm going to, I'm going to be you know, sore and I'm going to have probably some kind of sickness and you know, I'm going to have to deal with my husband or my wife for the rest of my life anyway, so I'm going to wait for now and suffer with them later. I'm young. And we don't realize how much we say that, even for those who aren't so young. I got time. I got time, I got time. So St. Alphonsus gives the example of the fig tree. Remember the fig tree that Christ walked by? And it specifically mentions in Scripture it was not the time for figs, but Christ wanted a fig. Christ was hungry. And it was not the time for figs, and he saw the tree, and there was no figs on it. And he cursed it. And, it, and then the next day they came back, and St. Peter saw it, and it was all withered up and dry. And he said, Lord, look, the tree that you cursed, it's, it's, it's withered up and dry. And you know what our Lord said, by the way? He said something, keep the faith. Something like that. Something about the faith. A very interesting answer. But anyway, it's not the point of the sermon. The fig tree, it was not the time for figs. But Christ wanted a fig. For the young people, for us young people, and even younger, you say, I got time. It's not the time for figs. It's not the time to bear fruit 
to suffer in my old age, to make, I'm young, I still have time to party and sin, or even not sin, but just have a good time, just in, 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 in uh, passing the time and amusements and recreation all day. I've got time. It's not the time for figs. I'll do that later in the old age, in the season of old age, when it's time for figs. But sometimes, out of season, our Lord wants the figs. That's some die young. We never know. So always remember, never say, I have time. We never know if we have time. And like I say, Alphonsus even says, okay, you might have another 30, 40, 50 years, but you also might only have a year, maybe a month, maybe less. We don't know. And we don't know when Christ wants a fig, so we can't say it's not the time for figs. St. Lawrence says, at the hour of death, St. Lawrence Justinian, <clears throat> something we esteem so little, <clears throat> It's funny, when it comes to the important things, matters so much. St. Louis Justinian says that at the time of death, when our deathbed comes, there is nothing we will want more than time. Right now, we don't mind spending an hour doing absolutely nothing or wasting our time on useless amusements that give us no benefit to the soul whatsoever. And that was another reason why it's, uh, it, it can be considered an evil not that we're doing something evil, but because we have a soul that we're, we have to save. We have God to glorify. We have other souls to save. So to waste it idly is evil. It's wrong. So at the time of death, there's nothing we're going to want more than that single hour. Just a little bit more time to prepare. Just a little bit more time to pray to make reparation. Just a little bit more time to ask for sorrow of repentance of our sins, mercy for our sins. And yet now... Being so blinded as we are, we're so willing to spend not just one hour, excuse me, hours and hours and hours and hours and hours on useless things. Spending the all of the day idle, passing the time, staring out the window, watching the gar cars go by, watching the grass grow. It's a waste of time. So remember, St. Lawrence says, you're going to want nothing else than time. And you have it now. So take it now. Take it now. Use it now. It's not the time... It, when you go, when you have a court date or something, you're being sued for something, and you're being taken to court, the time to prepare for the trial is not in the courtroom. To get all your papers together, to show the proof, to have the pictures, it wasn't my fault, my lawyer says this, I wasn't there at the time, here's the reason why, here's my allies, here's my proof, here's my witnesses. The time not, is not to do that in the courtroom. It's to do that before. In advance, months in advance. And if you were going over a trial over a lot of money, how much of us would spend a lot of time preparing? But when we're talking about our death and the trial of judgment, when we have the time now to prepare, how often do we forget and try to prepare at the last minute and say, I'll prepare later, I'll prepare later. And by when later comes, we're going to wish nothing more than just one more hour. We're going to wish nothing more than just a little bit more time. So use the time now. Use the time now that we have so we don't find ourselves reaching for and trying to scramble our papers together. And then, and then of course, he says at the time of death as well, this, the, the worriness and the, and the confused mind and the, and the being scared and, the, and that you're not going to be able to do it then. And you're going to just wish, I wish I just had more time. I wish I could spend my life being a saint. Well, you can now, so don't say that later. I wish. Oh, shoot, too bad. I missed my opportunity. Don't say that later on. You have the time now, so use it so you don't have to say that later on. And St. Alphonsus finishes with St. Paul, the great example of St. Paul. He was the last apostle. He was called last, and he was a persecutor, one of the worst apostles, maybe. Persecuted the church. He was the one who martyred St. Stephen. He was bad. He was wicked. And you could say like us. Maybe many of us were very evil, very wicked, committed many sins, had a lot of faults. But notice about St. Paul. St. Paul was the last apostle, and he was a persecutor of the church. But when he was called, and he converted, he became, and he merited probably more than the rest of the apostles. He became the greatest apostle. And he merited probably more than all of them. Because when he converted, he didn't waste time. He did not waste time. He prayed, and he suffered, and he spent out his salvation in fear and trembling. And he didn't spend the day idle. 
and he traveled, and he was shipwrecked, and he was scourged, and he was stoned, and he spent nights in prison, and coldness, and nakedness, and, 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 and beatings, and scourgings, like, as he mentions in one of his epistles. He went through all those trials. St. Paul, late and very bad, became one of the greatest. So, we still have confidence. We still have great joy. Even for us, maybe it's very late. Even for us, maybe we've committed many sins. But we still have time. And we can become great saints if we just use that time. Don't squander your time. Use the time. Use the time. And you can become, even now, you can become another St. Paul. We can become another great saint. We just have to use the time. And we should all know, well, I say I should know. I was used to, uh, before the seminary, work on, uh, I love clocks, right? And on all the clocks, they say, Temples Fuji, Temples Fuji, Temples Fuji, time flies, time flies, time flies. And a lot of the times, that's all over the place to remind us. That was why it was on the clock, because time does fly. Time flies, and it escapes from us, and it's very valuable. Don't waste your time, because you're going to want it back later, trust me. You're going to want just a few minutes, just an hour, to prepare for death. And it's not going to be given you. You're not going to have it. But you have it now. So don't waste your time. Time is, is very important. So they asked him, What is this little while of which he speaks? We do not know he is saying, what he is saying. But Jesus knew what they wished to ask him. And he said to them, and he continues, But I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no one shall take from you. So if you use your time wisely, we will rejoice with Christ in heaven. And through all the sufferings, like that one nun, she suffered all, she would rather suffer all those sufferings throughout the earth, no matter how many sufferings we can suffer. If we suffer through those in this short time, that's so small, the devil knows our lives are so short. If we just suffer through, even if it was the most incredible suffering, through this little bit of time, even if we're till judgment, there's no time in hell, there's no time in heaven, there's no more remitting of sins in hell, there's no more gaining merit in heaven. So, once... Death happens, it goes into eternity. So even if we had to suffer the greatest of sufferings, it's worth it, because for all of eternity, because the smallest town Mary, even that little bit of merit, so the greatest of sufferings for all of eternity, we get to enjoy those. And like Christ says, a joy that no man can or will take from you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.